You will never eat this after knowing how they're made. Food production is something we all know far too little about. We happily stick stuff in our mouth. But what exactly is it that we're nibbling? And how exactly is it made? These are 20 foods you'll never buy again knowing how it's made. Number 20. Pringles the last generations are characterized by having gobbled up during our childhood all kinds of sweets and snacks. Of all of them, there are a few as iconic as Pringles, a kind of wavy-shaped chip that fit perfectly one on top of another and are stored in tubular containers. Many of us mentally place them in the chips group, but surprise, they're not. How do they make them all the same shape? Do they cut them like this and fry them in some special way? Well. No, actually, before frying, Pringles are a dough that's cut the same shape and size. Well, let's face it, it's impossible not to love the taste. Technically speaking, Pringles are made from potato flakes or dehydrated potato, vegetable oil, rice flour, wheat starch, maltodextrin, iodized salt, dextrose, and wheat derivatives. So where's the real potato? Exactly. Pringles potato chips have everything but potatoes. Actually, they have so many additives, flavorings, aromas, and colorings that they can't be considered as potatoes. Dextrose and maltodextrin, for instance, are used to improve flavor, stabilize fats, and preserve the product for longer. They are sugars that are extracted from corn, wheat, barley, rice, potato, or sweet potato starch. There's no scientific knowledge about the damage they cause to health, but we do know that due to their origin, they are immediately absorbed by the body, causing sugar levels to rise rapidly. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Worcestershire Sauce Ah, uh, yes, the sauce that is absolutely impossible to pronounce if you're not born in the United Kingdom. People either adore it or find it appalling. Either way, everyone has a strong opinion about Worcestershire sauce. But how did it come to be? The sauce was first produced by two chemists, John Wheelie Lee and William Parents, who put it on sale in 1837. The story goes that there was a local aristocrat called Lord Sandys who had been governor of Bengal, India. When he went back to his home country, he found himself missing the rich and flavorful Indian cuisine. Cause, let's be honest. Honest, the British are not famous for their use of spices. So Lord Sandys decided to pay a visit to the two chemists, asking them to recreate a recipe for a delicious sauce he had in India. As it seems, Lee and Perrins made an extra jar for themselves, but found that they actually didn't like the sauce at all. So they stored it in the cellar and forgot about it. Sometime later, they remembered about the jar of sauce that they had in the cellar. They decided to give it another try, and this time, they found the concoction absolutely delicious. The sauce had obviously fermented, and it's still made this way today. That's why a lot of people will tell you not to spend your money in Worcestershire sauce if you don't want to become sick. Number 18. Cheese in a can. You don't need a master's degree in nutrition to know that spray cheese is not an essential food. It's also not necessary to be an expert in view of the figures on food and the resulting health problems to know that the United States has a serious problem with this issue. Curiously, or not really, it is pure ideology applied to food, which should be almost a state affair has become another business for the food industry. Part of the acceptance of food sprays is that they adapt to the needs of the current rhythm of life of the human being, which is more accelerated and technological. But is it good for you? This culinary aberration is a union of all the bad things that are currently only allowed in certain countries in the world, like the United States, of course. 100 grams contains 300 calories, 1,310 milligrams of salt, 75% of the maximum recommended daily amount, and 46 milligrams of cholesterol. But the worst of all is that it's cheese under the ingredients, and not much more. Except that they advise not getting the cheese on your skin because it'll cause a rash and a list of more serious side effects. If it does that to your external skin, can you imagine what it's doing to your inside organs? Number 17. Orange Juice an important part of breakfast is orange juice. However, its excessive intake can cause some damage to your health. Orange juice contains fructose. Excess intake makes you gain weight by tricking your metabolism by turning off the appetite control organ in your system. Fructose does not adequately stimulate insulin, which in turn does not suppress ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and does not stimulate leptin, the satiety hormone, which together lead to insulin resistance, and this makes a person overeat. Orange juice can damage your ears. Fructose increases 
increases triglyceride levels. The ear is usually the first organ to reveal a condition in the circulatory system, with hyperlipidemia being more frequent, that is, high triglyceride levels. If it's not fresh and has been in the refrigerator or outdoors for more than two hours, its nutritional value is reduced by up to 80%. It can also cause diabetes. Although eating fruit reduces the risk of developing diabetes, drinking it seems to increase it. If you're drinking it for the fiber, orange juice contains practically no fiber. A glass of orange juice represents 10% of the fiber that an orange has. It can dramatically increase your weight. Only fast-absorbing carbohydrates are used in orange juice, which sharply increases insulin in the blood and favor the formation of fat. Orange juice can be harmful, but if consumed in moderation and as part of a balanced diet, it can be beneficial. It's all about moderation. Number 16. Beer did you know that most beers are not suitable for vegans? But what could there be in beer that comes from an animal? Well, the answer is pretty gross, actually. Vegans have numerous problems when it comes to choosing which beer to drink, as many of the modern varieties use animal protein in their manufacture. Specifically, the ingredient of conflict is the so-called fishtail. It's a product obtained from the bladder of some species of fish, specifically sturgeon or carp, which is used to make jellies that serve as a clarifying agent for beer. By adding this substance to the barrels, the remains of yeast, grape skins, and other solid products settle, separating from the final product. This way, the beer that's obtained is less cloudy, and it's avoided having to waste the liquid from the bottom of the barrels. Also, this way beer can be served faster. Basically, clarifiers are not necessarily to make beer, and they're absent in most artisan varieties, but their use spread from the 19th century, when transparent glasses replaced those made of stone, ceramic, and metal, and consumers began to find it unpleasant to look at the solid elements that swarm their drinks. Number 15. Peanut Butter What nutrients does peanut butter provide? Well, fats. Basically, fat. Well, specifically, the same ones that would be provided by peanuts that aren't creamed. It's estimated that 100 grams of peanut butter provides 23.4 grams of monounsaturated fatty acids and about 14 grams of polyunsaturated fatty acids, mainly of the omega-6 type. In addition, this legume, and yes, the peanut is a legume, is also rich in protein. Specifically, about 27 grams of protein per 100 grams of product. That's why it's also been so popular among athletes, fit boys, and girls on social networks and gyms. It also provides us with 8.1 grams of fiber and minerals such as phosphorus, 432 milligrams, potassium, 680 milligrams, magnesium, 174 milligrams, and zinc, 3 milligrams. Now, of course, seen like this, who wouldn't think that this product is the new paradigm of health? Well, some brands of peanut butter are often made with more than just peanuts and added sugar, making it sweeter, addictive, and less healthy. Some contain up to 7 grams per 2 tablespoons. You must be careful with low-fat products. Some can compensate with other unwanted ingredients, such as sugar. Added sugar promotes obesity, diabetes, and can increase the risk of heart disease. The American Heart Association recommends consuming no more than 6 teaspoons of added sugar per day for most women and no more than 9 teaspoons for most men. Number 14. Packaged Bread we still don't know what's in our food. For instance, bread. Unless you're buying loaves from limited lots at a local bakery, chances are you won't be able to tell for sure what's in it. If you're purchasing your bread from a commercial producer, it likely contains human hair. Yeah, you heard that right, human hair. Amino acids are the building blocks of life, but they are not all created equal. L-cysteine, for example, is an amino acid used to extend the shelf life of products such as commercial bread and is often synthesized from human hair, as well as duck feathers, cow horns, and pig bristles. The hair, it seems, is mostly collected from the floors of hair salons in China, and it's dissolved in acid through chemical isolation. The L-cysteine is isolated, packaged, and shipped to commercial bread producers. If the thought makes you wonder, bread, a sure way to avoid the whole human hair thing is to just buy bread from a baker, since L-cysteine is not an additive in flour. However, you should probably avoid fast food outlets. Next time you're eating a nice sandwich, just picture this. That bread may very well have been somebody's ponytail in China not too long before coming to you as food. Number 13. Swordfish 
The mercury that contaminates the water ends up in the fish and shellfish that we eat. An analysis confirms that large predatory fish, such as swordfish and bluefin tuna, accumulate more mercury than smaller ones. To prevent risks, try to vary the type of fish on your menus and only eat the most contaminated species once in a while. Mercury is a metal that, at certain doses, is harmful to health and especially to pregnant women and young children. It must be taken into account that mercury accumulates in large, oily fish. Tuna and swordfish can weigh more than 250 kilos, and this is so because it can't be eliminated and the longer the fish lives and the larger it is, the more mercury accumulates in its body. For this reason, the recommendation of cardiologists to consume small Small oily fish makes perfect sense, since they are the richest in omega-3 and, like whitefish, are an excellent source of high-quality protein with essential micronutrients such as iodine, selenium, phosphorus, or vitamin A and D. Since mercury interferes with the development of the nervous system during pregnancy and infancy, it's prudent for pregnant or lactating women and young children to refrain from consuming these fish. If swordfish or bluefin tuna are removed from the diet, this problem disappears. Number 12. Processed meat. You'll never eat this again knowing how it's made. Processed meat is any type of meat that's been transformed by salting, curing, fermenting, smoking, or other processes to improve flavor and preserve food. This would include bacon, hot dogs, hamburgers, and cold cuts as well. Although most of them are beef or pork, this group also includes sausages made with blood, minced poultry, or offal. Examples of processed meats include sausage, ham, corned beef, and jerky or beef jerky, as well as canned meat and meat-based preparations and sauces. Processed meat is considered to be highly carcinogenic to humans. It's the so-called Group 1 of substances that includes the most dangerous for health, according to the criteria of the International Agency for Research on Cancer. In this group, there are 107 substances, including tobacco, alcoholic beverages, or plutonium. Around 25% of colon cancers have to do with diet, and specifically with the consumption of red and processed meat. In addition, it's concerning that every day there's more scientific evidence indicating that its consumption is also related to cancers of the stomach, pancreas, nasopharynx, and even lung. The reason lies in several of its compounds. Heme iron, which can damage the lining of the colon, nitrates used in meat processing as a preservative, or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are generated in certain processes such as smoking or cooking at high temperatures. Number 11. Gelatin. Collagen supplements, very expensive, are one of the pharmacy's best sellers. Which is incredible, because as the experts explain and scientific evidence dictates, ingested collagen will never reach the area of your body that needs it. And that's in tablets, powder, in ampules, alone, or combined with hyaluronic acid. They claim it rejuvenates your skin, strengthens your nervous system, regenerates tissues, and takes care of your bones and joints. Collagen is an essential protein of the human body, which is part of different tissues. It provides flexibility, elasticity, and resistance to pressure. This protein is very abundant in skin, bones, and joints such as ligaments, tendons, and cartilage. It's also found in the cornea and in the walls of blood vessels. Collagen is a fundamental protein for the proper functioning of the body and represents more than 25% of the total protein content in mammals. So it's important to have optimal levels of collagen in our bodies. The natural source of obtaining this protein is found mainly in the cartilage of mammals such as chickens, cows, ox, pigs, and also in fish. There are foods that are are very rich in collagen, such as pig's feet. So what you're buying at the pharmacy is basically skin and bones from a pig. Plant collagen does not exist due to the functional incompatibility of this protein with plants, which lack mobility. Number 10. Caesar Salad Many people order a Caesar salad in restaurants thinking that it's a healthy option. Don't be fooled. Although this salad provides you with good amounts of protein, vitamins, minerals, and fibers, its high fat and sodium content puts it out of reach for many people. Although you can make a healthier Caesar salad with a few changes, the traditional version of this salad should be eaten in moderation. When we think of a salad, a healthy and light dish comes to mind. However, this salad, made with croutons, battered chicken, and Caesar sauce, a sauce derived from mayonnaise, is especially unbalanced. What's the result of this combination? A total of 1,000 calories. That is half the recommended daily calories. And let's be completely honest here, the best part of this salad is the dressing. But 
What's in it, really? You know that tang we all love in the dressing? Well, that comes mainly from Worcestershire sauce and anchovies. Yep, the same little salty fishes that you would never, ever let anyone put on your pizza. Those are the ones. This salad is so packed with bad things for you that experts around the world confirm that it's even more fattening than a cheeseburger, making it the most unhealthy and fattening salad ever created. You should check out my taco salad. Number 9. Microwave Popcorn Who doesn't love microwave popcorn? But alas, it is super bad for you. Popcorn ingredients, as well as packaging materials, contain elements that are harmful to health. The inside of the bag contains perfluorooctanoic acid, which is used in Teflon pans to prevent food from sticking. It's been found that its residues can remain in the environment and in the body for a long time. Additionally, studies have found that when the chemical is heated, it can cause infertility, cancer, and other diseases. The corn kernel, although not genetically modified, is not organic either, so it may contain pesticides that are harmful to your health. Most brands no longer contain trans fats, the most harmful to the body. However, they present other types of fats, such as saturated fats, that are bad due to the difficulty in eliminating them from the body. There are also ingredients that aren't listed on the label. For example, TDHQ is often added to preserve the oils that make kernels pop. This chemical is made from butane, a toxic gas which, consumed in large enough quantities, can cause attention deficit and hyperactivity in children, asthma, allergies, dermatitis, and dizziness. In addition, in laboratory tests, it has generated stomach cancer in animals. Finally, the artificial colorant may contain monosodium glutamate, beaver, anal glands, and diacetyl. These compounds cause lung complications for those who handle them in factories. And who wants to eat an animal's anal gland anyway? Number 8. Instant Noodles Nowadays, it seems that if you're a college student in a shared apartment, your pantry must be stocked with containers of instant noodles. However, this handy method to quell hunger and fix meals quickly and tastily could be wreaking havoc on the health of consumers, especially in the female population. At least, this is what a study carried out by a group of researchers from the Harvard School of Public Health defends, the results of which were published in the famous Journal of Nutrition. Apparently, its consumption would increase the risk of developing metabolic syndrome in women by 60 8%. Although, yeah, it's necessary to eat this type of instant noodles at least twice a week. The research focused on a group of 10,711 adults in South Korea, a choice that's not accidental given that the consumption of instant noodles in this country is the highest in the world. However, many will find it curious that the most affected are women. Why? Well, one of the main authors of the research, Dr. Frank B. Hu, professor of nutrition and epidemiology at Harvard, wonders the same thing. This may be because women report their diet more accurately, or because postmenopausal women are more sensitive to the dietary effect of carbohydrates, sodium, and saturated fat. Instant noodle consumption is relatively high among Asian populations. In fact, South Koreans consumed 3.4 billion packages of noodles in 2010 alone. Number 7. Tuna Canned tuna is a food that many people have in their pantry and that they eat more than once a week, in salads, between bread, and in different recipes. It's a safe product, but eating a lot of canned tuna may not be so good for your health. It depends on how often this fish is consumed. Canned tuna has many properties, and its consumption is beneficial in moderation. Tuna has vitamins A, D, B3, and B12. For example, it protects the skin and memory, along with other functions of our body that make us have better health. In addition, canned tuna is rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which help reduce cholesterol and thin the blood. But tuna has one important point against it, and that is the amount of mercury it contains. And it is dangerous, particularly for children and women who are pregnant. Children's brains are still developing, which means they absorb nutrients faster than adults. Exposure to mercury at this stage can cause extremely serious and irreversible conditions, such as learning disabilities and developmental delays. In infants and fetuses, high doses can lead to cognitive difficulties, cerebral palsy, deafness, and blindness. In adults, mercury poisoning can cause fertility and blood pressure issues. I bet those anchovies are looking better and better now. Number 6. Packaged Meat 
One of the main findings of an analysis has been that packaged minced meat has an inadequate proportion of protein and collagen. The presence of collagen is related to the fact that some parts of the animal that should not be included in this product are minced, such as cartilage and tendons. On the other hand, if you buy the meat at the butcher, you'll see if the piece is clean of it and that they are only serving you meat. There is a law that allows up to 1% traces of other types of meat than those advertised on the label inside the minced meat trays. What's surprising is that a study has shown that this percentage is actually much higher, even reaching 3% in some low-quality and cheaper meats such as pork and chicken. What does this mean? Well, when we buy a tray of packaged minced beef in a supermarket, we can find that 3% is pork, which is cheaper meat. However, the opposite is not the case, since beef is more expensive. It's a fairly common practice among many brands that, in this way, saves costs and manages them to fatten the contents of the tray by mixing the main meat with lower-quality products. Number 5. Boxed Cereals Commercial cereals, the ones that come in cardboard boxes with colorful and attractive designs, have become the main breakfast option for many people around the world. Their great popularity is due in part to the simplicity of their consumption. You just have to serve them with a little milk and that's it. However, they've also gained great popularity because they are sold as healthy foods enriched with vitamins and minerals. Although at first these cereals were simply baked cornflakes, later changes began to be made to the ingredients, mixtures, incorporation of colors, flavors, and sugar. Today, there are a lot of alternatives to choose from. When you read the nutritional table on many of these cereals, you'll find that the sugar content per cup or per 100 grams is almost the total of the recommended daily dose. In the end, what you get with their consumption is a calorie bomb, and even more so if you decide to accompany them with milk. The high consumption of sugary cereals is associated with behavioral disorders in children, as well as with conditions such as diabetes and obesity. These cereals are rich in starch and therefore can easily spike blood glucose levels. Therefore, these cereals are not recommended for people with diabetes, prediabetes, or low sensitivity to insulin. Furthermore, refined carbohydrates are directly related to being overweight and obesity. Number 4. Chicken According to the American Heart Association, eating three to four eggs a week has been associated with a 6% higher risk of suffering a cardiovascular event and an 8% increased risk of dying from any other cause linked to cholesterol. Researchers found that consuming comparable amounts of red meat or chicken or other poultry similarly increased cholesterol levels, especially when compared to how much the blood level of this dreaded molecule increases if the same amount of cholesterol is consumed protein from vegetables, especially soy. When they set out to do this study, they expected that red meat would have greater adverse effects on blood cholesterol levels than white meat. They were greatly surprised when they saw that this was not the case. To keep the results obtained logical, the researchers did not resort to the dreaded bacon or sausages or other processed products, but rather pure beef for red meat and excluded fish from the classification of white meat. However, until now, we were more or less clear about which foods were good at keeping dangerous levels of this molecule at bay and which were terrible at fulfilling this very purpose. Fish? Brilliant. Vegetables? Perfect. Bacon? Not so much. But it would seem that chicken is not better than red meat. They're both equally bad for you. Number 3. Coke and Pepsi the dangerous thing about soft drinks isn't just the sugar and sweetness. In fact, it's the gas, since it affects the cardiovascular system and also has consequences on the bone system. It has been specifically proven that soft drinks are harmful to health in various aspects, at any age and regardless of gender. Its regular consumption affects the cardiovascular system, thus increasing the risk of heart disease. It can also cause diabetes. And no, this is not an exaggeration. The reality is, the consumption of soft drinks continues to be very high worldwide, especially due to the use of caffeine and other additive substances in their preparation. However, it's the large advertising campaigns that promote its mass purchase and consumption. For this reason, unfortunately, there are many homes where eating without having one of these drinks on the table is just inconceivable. Fizzy drinks are harmful to health because they contain several harmful substances in their composition. The most popular are caffeine and sugar, however, they are not the only ones. Flavors, preservatives, and dyes also have an impact on the body. The vast majority of soft drinks contain large amounts of refined sugar. It can be sucrose or fructose extracted from transgenic corn. Either is harmful from small amounts that any soft drink easily exceeds in a single can or glass. Number 2. Tomato Ketchup Ketchup could take the title of the most popular sauce in the world. 
but is it good to consume it very often? Well, according to experts, the answer is no. Why? Well, because ketchup is full of substances that aren't exactly healthy, like sugar, salt, spices, and high fructose corn syrup. A nutrient-dense food provides protective micronutrients and helps support immunity. However, ketchup has low nutritional value and contains no protein or fiber. Excessive consumption of foods with high fructose corn syrup is linked to elevated levels of triglycerides, a type of fat found in the blood that causes heart problems. Eating a lot of sugar can cause you to gain weight. In addition, when excess glucose reduces the ability of cells to absorb and use blood sugar, insulin resistance occurs. Tomato sauce, being an acidic food due to the presence of acids such as malic and citric acid, can cause heartburn. Therefore, those with stomach problems such as a digestive disorder or gastroesophageal reflux disease should avoid ketchup. Processed and preserved foods are linked to a risk of inflammation, which in turn could lead to joint problems. High-sodium processed foods raise the level of calcium in your urine, which can increase your chance of developing kidney stones. Try, instead, to make your own homemade ketchup or find an organic alternative. Number 1. Margarine Margarine, one of the most common products in our cuisine, was created by the French chemist Hippolyte Mege Maurier in 1869 with the aim of offering consumers a cheaper and easier to keep alternative to butter, its main competitor to date. Although its appearance on the market was very well received, it wasn't until the Second World War when the most dazzling success knocked on its door. The reason? Being a food rich in lipids, it provided the necessary energy to the troops and citizens who had to face such a bloody battle. However, over the years, this popularity plummeted. After being the healthy alternative to butter for decades due to its vegetable origin and because it doesn't contain such a high level of saturated fat, in the 1980s it was discovered that its production process also promoted the appearance of trans fats, becoming a product much more harmful than previously thought. It is necessary to be careful with these products because it's not advisable to ingest more than 3 grams of these compounds daily and because these products aren't suitable for pregnant women, lactating women, and young children. It should also not be forgotten that cardiovascular disease is multi factorial, so reducing the level of cholesterol in the blood doesn't necessarily mean that the risk of suffering from this pathology is reduced. As you can see, all your favorite foods are not necessarily good for you, and what we know is healthy today may well change tomorrow. So what's your attitude knowing this? Will you still consume all these products, or will you be more careful in the future? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!